We'll start off a little bit with um, rainy day play. Sometimes it's a little tough to get active inside and when you're all cooped up and it's rainy and your kids are going crazy, it's nice to have a few tricks in your back pocket, things that you can think of to do to kind of keep them active. So I wanted to start with just sort of a, a main point, which is make rainy day play active if you can. So if you're stuck in the house and you want to get kids a little bit active, or if you can go outside in appropriate clothing and the kids like to be out in the rain, try to make it active outside as well. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. So I wanted to overview the daily recommendations for physical activity because we, we know that physical activity is good for kids, right? It helps their bodies grow up strong, it's good for their bones and their muscles and to keep them healthy. So basically, all kids really don't get enough physical activity. Um, we really want them to get more. So anything that we can do in our daily lives, kind of in the environments kids are in, so that's childcare and school and at home, anything that we can do to help them be more active is really great. So I'm going to tell you what the recommendations are for each age group for physical activity. So in infants, really all that means is tummy time. So we're going to put, put their babies, put your babies on their tummies a few times a day for just a few minutes and let them build those head and neck muscles. That's how they kind of get to learn how to move and build that, those strengthening muscles that they're going to need to build those movements as they get a little bit older. So that's really all it means for infants. You want to make sure that they don't spend a whole lot of time in equipment that confines them. So not a whole lot of time in extra saucers and swings and stuff like that. You really just want to let them be on the floor so that they can explore a little bit, reach and grab for things around them. Um, learn to roll over and things like that. So that's really what we're talking about for babies. For toddlers, the recommendations are about 60 to 90 minutes a day of physical activity, and that's a minimum. Really, we want kids to be active as much as possible. So for toddlers, physical activity really just means active play. So you know that they're really just starting to walk. They're kind of just getting their legs under them. They're learning how to move and how their body works and kind of all of those things. So it doesn't have to be intense. Really, it just means creating an active environment. So open spaces where kids can play that are safe and letting your toddler kind of explore that environment, learn to pick things up and move them, um, feel comfortable walking, that kind of thing. Preschoolers, the recommendation for physical activity is about 90 to 120 minutes. And again, that's a minimum. So as much as we can get them active, that would be great. So preschoolers, really, that's the time when they just start being kind of more breathless and active. So they start being a little bit more vigorous in their activity. They still stop and start a lot. So they'll you know, pick something up, run somewhere else, put it down, do a little playing there. Um, so that's kind of what physical activity looks like in preschool. And this is the age when you want to start thinking about combining both kind of structured activity. So that's something that would be led by you, a parent or um, a caregiver, a teacher, and then also letting kids do free play. So the kind of both of those are important. And the free play is really important for kids because it helps them build their imagination, learn how to work with other kids, things like that. And then the structured activity is really important because it can help kids learn how to do those movement skills that they need to learn to kind of set the foundation for movement. And structured activity also helps kids get a little more vigorous activity. So they don't necessarily get that breathless activity when they play by themselves. They get it a little bit more easily when they have activities that are facilitated by parents or caregivers. School age kids, so that's basically five and over. The recommendation is 60 minutes or more, so an hour a day. And outside time for all ages. So really we want to get kids, all kids, little kids, big kids, us, outside uh, every day to be active. And the reason for that both is to get you outside so that you get fresh air, so you get vitamin D, which is good you know, for your body also from the sun. And then also outside time helps to facilitate physical activity. So it's easier to be active when we go outside and we tend to be more active when we go outside. So that's why that time is important. And I mentioned already structured activity and free play. 
So in terms of kids, what's really um, kind of important and sets the foundation for physical activity and, and feeling good and learning how to be active um, is movement awareness. So when you think about being little, activity, they're just learning how to move, right? You're learning how, how to use the different parts of your body, what kind of movements it can do, what it looks like in space, how it interacts with things around you. And so these are just some kind of key concepts to think about when we're talking about building physical activity skills and movement. We talk about paying attention to what my body does. So kids will learn it can walk and run, it can twist and bend, it can throw and catch. So those are just some examples of what your body does, how your body moves. So does it move fast or slow? Does it stop or start? combinations of movements. So just from walking to a walk and a hop makes a skip, right? So that kind of starts teaching you how to put movements together. Where your body moves in space, so you can slide to the left, you can slide to the right, forward, backward, up, down. With my body, other movers and objects. So kind of interacting with the environment around you. What does your own body do? Um, what, how do you interact with other movers around you. So one of the most important things we can do with physical activity is uh, keep in mind that it doesn't have to be hard and it doesn't have to be separate from other things that we do. You can kind of get activity worked into your day and connect it to other things that you want kids to learn. So this is something we talk to childcare providers and teachers about all the time, is that you don't have to block out a time for physical activity and the kids are just active. You can work it into your learning during the day, and you can do that at home also. So here are just some ideas for physical activity. You can connect it to shapes and colors. So for example, you can have your kids go find the color yellow and touch it and come back to me. Go find the color green. You can do that with um, different shapes. You can have them find triangles, find circles. You can kind of write these things out, put them around the house, and have them go hunt for them and come back to you. You can. Uh, work on letters and numbers, so you can out create letters and numbers with your body, you know, doing ones and twos and threes. You can do it standing up, laying on the floor. You can draw letters and numbers in the air, so that works on movement awareness also, as well as your knowledge of your numbers and your letters. Patterns, so things like green, pink, blue, so kids will learn how to, how to build that pattern and then go find it. So for example, I put these balloons over here. This is just a really easy thing you can do with something that you have at home. We just use static electricity to kind of rub these and stick them to the wall. So you could do something like build a pattern with kids, say touch the green, the blue, and the red, and then we build a pattern by doing that again. You can do that kind of all over your house, that's just an idea. And then another something easy you can use is I had like leftover streamers at home from a party. So that's a nice prop also. Kids can dance with them, they can move them around, they can create their letters and their numbers. So that's kind of a, an inexpensive thing you probably already have that's easy to use. So you see the picture up here of the little boy kind of tossing those different colors onto the mat. So we're, we're working on both spatial awareness and hand-eye coordination also in your colors. And then another little boy in the bathtub kind of drawing, right? That's a, a great place, easy to clean up, which is always key with kids. So these are kind of things to think about. Um, with reading, we love to do things like action stories, and you can do this with any book. So as you're reading a book, you can just stand up, and as you're reading, act out the action words. So you walked down to the store, the bunny hopped, okay? And you can do these things together. It's a really easy thing you can do with, with any book that you have. Movement in limited space. So this is always the challenge, right? Homes are sometimes tight and we don't have a lot of space. So an important thing is to really be creative. You don't really need a lot of space to be active. So these are some things you can think about. Um, if you are able to clear uh, as large a space as possible and just make it safe for kids, that's really important. So you don't want things there that, that will hurt them. So if you could just clear, move furniture to the side and create a safe space, that's great. You can use hallways for things like hopscotch, for sliding, for bowling, for things like that. Um, you can create a bin of movement materials. So this is just something you could kind of keep to the side in your house where kids can go and pick up things whenever they want to. And then things like 
chalk and masking or painting tape and paper plates you can use as kind of spots on the floor for kids to jump to um, with different colors or letters written on them, things like that. Those are all things that you already have at your house that you might not think of in terms of um, helping to facilitate physical activity. And then some ideas for recycling things. You can make balls out of you know, crumpled up paper and tape them, milk jugs, paper towel tubes, um, and music. Music is always a great way to facilitate physical activity and you can put on anything, right? And kids just love to move and dance. So I thought I'd put up a few sample activities just to kind of spark your imagination of things that you might be able to do. So one is imagine if you were. So this can, you can go anywhere with this. And the idea is that you say imagine that you, if, that you are and your child will act out whatever that is. So imagine if you were a chair, what would you look like? And they might sit or something. Imagine if you were a volcano that was erupting, what would you look like? <sighs> Okay, so they can act out all of these things, and you can imagine if you were pretty much anything. Bubble chase, so that's something that's easy to do in the house. You can have them blow bubbles and run around and pop them. Action stories, which I already explained. You can be active while you're reading. Vacuum cleaner, um, which is the idea of just having kids help to clean up by <laughs> pretending you're a vacuum cleaner and you go around and you suck up all the toys and then you walk back and you deposit them in their little area. Popcorn socks. Has anybody ever seen that game where you all hold a corner of a, a big sheet and you like bounce it and the things pop up? So you can do that at home too by just balling up some socks and putting them in a sheet and you all can hold an edge of the sheet and when you bounce it all together the things in the middle start popping all over the place. So kids love that activity in school and you don't need to have the colorful tools. You can do that at home just with a sheet and some socks. Elmo says, you know, just a variation on Simon Says, you can use any character you want. Balloon tetherball, this is kind of a fun thing I was doing the other day with my son, who's very, very young. Um, if you happen to have any helium balloons sitting around from a party, you can tie them to a little can and anchor them on the ground so they're, you know, as high as your kid and they can go around and practice kind of their movement skills in terms of bopping them around. That's good for hand-eye coordination also. Helps them to build their skills. Cookie cutter creative movement, this is an interesting one. Um, if you have cookie cutters at home, you can have kids act out or act out what the cookie cutter actually is. So if you have animals, they could be acting out the movements of the animals and the sounds. You can put them around the house and have them move to them and then act out those things. So there are a lot of ideas on here. Um, I won't go over them all. Bathtubs are a great place for kids to be when it's, you know, um, not rainy outside or pleasant outside. So bathtubs aren't just for baths. Kid lo kids love to play with water, and it really helps their sensory, their sensory working on that, too. So they can pour things and splash around, and you don't just have to be getting clean in there. Sometimes it's just fun to have a little fun in the water. And then the last idea... I'll touch on is a jar of fun, which is sometimes nice just when your kids say they can't think of anything to do. So if you take the opportunity at one point to just have them write down a lot of activities that they like to do, and you put them all in one place, and you can do this with pieces of paper or, <coughs> excuse me, popsicle sticks or these little balls that you see, have them write down activities that they do like to do, and then when they're really bored and they can't think of anything, have them go pick out an idea from the jar of fun, and they can work on that. So I do want to make the point that activity is so wonderful and being outside is fun even if the weather isn't great. So really it's a rare occasion when there's weather that is really dangerous for kids to be outside. Usually it's the adults who think it's not appropriate to go outside, not the kids. So I just wanted to point out that weather usually isn't too much of a risk. Usually it's not bad weather, it's just bad clothing. So we want to make sure kids are appropriately dressed so that they're safe for the weather but that these are the things that pose a significant health risk. And other than that, weather is usually pretty good. So wind chill at or below negative 15. So we almost never see that here in Delaware. Pretty much we're safe there. Heat index at or above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So we have to watch out for that a little bit kind of in the dead of the summer. But even then, kids could go out for a few minutes and come back in. It's really the extended periods of time that we're worried about. We do want to remember to pr protect them from the sun during those peak hours of sun 
um, when it's really harsh, so 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And however kids go outside, just make sure they're dressed in appropriate clothing. So hats, coats, gloves, rain gear, and sunscreen. But it's really important for kids to be able to go outside and experience that weather. You know, how much fun is it to go outside and splash around and, you know, play in the snow? That's kind of, it's great for kids to do. So just remember there's lots of opportunities for fun in any kind of weather, rain or snow, puddle jumping, making mud pies, going on a nature walk, exploring maybe what nature looks like when it's sunny, what nature looks like when it's raining, what kinds of things that you see, building snow families, sledding or doing a snowball toss. So we talked about what activity looks like for these different age groups and I really want to just kind of end with the point that it's easy and fun. Physical activity is not supposed to be hard. It's not supposed to be something that we just dread to do. It really is a lot of fun. So I hope that you'll take that point away. You've got most of the stuff that you need. We really don't need a lot of expensive things to be active. So that's important to remember. It just takes a little bit of creativity and the things you already have at home. So just have fun with it and make a little time and space and be active as a family. That's one of the greatest ways to do it. So I just wanted to point out a few activity resources for parents, and we do have copies of a few of these things. Head Start, Body Start is a great website that has activity calendars for every month. They're free. You can just print them off. I have copies of them up here you can grab after the session. And for every day, they have a different thing for you to do with your child. And so they've got them for the past few years, and they just keep coming out with a new one every month. It's a great resource. The Sesame Workshop, we have um, some Sesame Street materials out on the table, which you're welcome to grab, and they have more on their website. And then I cannot officially promote Pinterest, but I have to tell you that they have a lot of great ideas. If anybody is a member of Pinterest, people always post like really fun things to do with kids. So it's a, a good place to get interesting ideas. So thank you very much. I think we'll hold questions until Mary's finished and she's gonna come up and talk about nutrition. <laughs>